I am CIQ and welcome to part 2 of Tegami, also known as the Letter. We are playing as Takahiro, who is a, uh, an ordinary Japanese man, I think. And we are returning to our hometown right now and it's raining. Our father has died and we have a letter. And we have uh, read the salutation in the first part. If you haven't seen that yet, make sure to check it out before watching this. Now let's continue where we left off. The wind wasn't lying either. So, I picked up my pace. Everything was soaked by the time my parents' place came into view. Everything except my bag. That was waterproof, thank goodness. Everything around me was the same, yet yeah, it was not. The rain changed things somehow. For instance, it had soaked my already sweat-soaked t-shirt through and through, making my clothes as heavy as my spirits. I ran for dear life toward the front door. I saw that it was open. There was someone standing there. Mom. It's me, Takahiro, I yelled. I've come home. But Mom couldn't hear me. The cicadas had nothing to do with it. They'd been silent ever since the rain had started. The rain, however, was more than loud enough to make up for that. So I tried calling out again. Mom, it's me. No let up in the rain. But this time Mom heard me. Or so it seemed. She turned toward me with a smile. Except for one thing. Something wasn't quite right here. No idea what it was, but this was really weird. I felt totally out of place for a moment, but I got over it soon enough. Had to have been my imagination. I rushed over to where Mom was. I could smell the fragrance of incense even from this distance. My, you're soaked wet. Did you have that much trouble getting here? She asked as I reached her. No, not at all, I answered. Silence fell between us for a time, because I couldn't find a way to break it. First time I'd seen her in years, there were shadows in her face and lines, neither of which I remembered. Um, I'm kind of tired now, I managed to say. So would you mind if I got some sleep? Oh, of course not. Go ahead. There are blankets in your room, Mom replied with her usual smooth smile. You smooth fucker, Mom. <laughs> so I quickly changed my clothes and headed into my old room. <clears throat> okay, that's better. The sound the sound effects are really, really awesome. The room was exactly as I'd left it. <clears throat> I laid out the blankets, then I laid myself out in them. A sigh escaped from my lips. All the tiredness I'd accumulated since the train ride started draining away into darkness. The rain wasn't letting up any time soon. I felt alone inside it. It surrounded me. It cocooned in me. It cocooned me, sorry. And it guided me into slumber. Wow. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. The birds were twittering when I awoke. Nice, some cool background music. Yay! Very charming. I got up out of bed and headed out of my room. No more rain. The sun was out in full force. And when I closed my eyes, I could feel the rays soaking through my eyelids. Oh, Takahiro. A good day, isn't it? I turned to face her, only to find her smiling at me, with her broom in her hands. I smiled back. Yeah, sure, you're up early, Mom. And honestly, that was my first thought. But Mom wasn't having any of it. Don't be silly, it's already noon, dear. Oh. Oops. I looked outside. No wonder the sun was so bright and so high in the sky. Oops. Then why didn't you wake me up? I asked sleepily. <laughs> she replied. It didn't feel right, that's all. I didn't feel right either. There was this sadness in her voice. But it went as quickly as it came. The smile was back on her face in seconds. I'm just surprised, see? Mom continued. That you didn't even pay your respects to father before you went to sleep last night. You didn't even tell me you were coming in the first place. What's going on here? Her face wrinkled over, this time with concern. I stayed quiet for a while. It seemed like forever. I could feel the sun beating down on me. Oh, right, I said with a smile. Might as well go say hi. And I walked past Mom. I could hear her murmuring about how hopeless I was being behind my back. Ignored her. I walked through the corridor. The flooring creaked under my feet. The altar room wasn't far away. I stopped at the door. It's been years, hasn't it? I whispered. 
I mean, it's been years, hasn't it? I whispered. The door slid open smoothly and came to rest with a snap. The scent of burning incense wafted into my nostrils. I closed the door behind me. No matter how many times I did this, it sent chills down my spine. After all, what place did I have in a room whose master would never return? The entire room was still. I sat cross-legged before the altar. The atmosphere was indescribable, quiet and solemn. It twisted inside me like a knife, or perhaps it chose to. For my part, I chose to stare at the picture of, a, of the deceased, who chose to stare back at me with a smile and without blinking. I sat there in silence for a time. Good to see you, I finally managed. Mind if I stay a while? The stillness of the room was a bit much. It was heavy. It settled, uh, it settled on the ground like a chunk of dead air. I could feel it press down on me. <clears throat> but I remained sitting. I wonder why. Maybe it was because something was making me. Or maybe because I wanted to. I'd never know. I did know this. I could not call this man dad. The father. Oh god, a little bit of background story. I wonder what's happened. But I, I had no idea why or since when. Sometimes it felt like it had been a long time. Other times it felt like just yesterday. Or, or maybe it was because I didn't come here often enough. It didn't matter what I called him anymore. He'd never answer me either way. We'd never let, uh, we'd never get to talk ever again. Since I lit an instant stick, I rang the bell. And I put my hands together. Empty, empty motions and rituals. No emotions behind them. Lather, rinse, repeat. Like some laughable autom automaton. Right. This was all laughable. Myself included. Not rebellious, not impudent. Those, uh, those would have been fine. Just laughable and ridiculous. Suddenly I did not feel like staying in this mausoleum any longer. I left soon thereafter. Oh god. Takahiro doesn't like his dad. We had somen for lunch that day. Tamagoyaki, cucumbers, and sesame oil on the side. Simple food, simply made, tasty, nostalgic, just like when I was a kid. I mentioned this to mom, she just laughed. I found myself back in a room I once called mine. So much smaller than I remembered, darker. I could smell the sunlight splintering into dust and the shadows. Not a thing had changed in 19 years, at least where this room was concerned. Okay, so we know we have left since 19 years, and we probably left since we were 18. So, taking all of that into account, we are probably like, I don't know, 73, uh, 73, wow, 37 years old. <laughs> and I like this this way. The smell, the size, the darkness, everything. The only sanctuary of a lonely child. I could still remember the day I was told that this room was mine. I was so excited I couldn't go to sleep. My very own place, my very own space, my very own castle, my invincible fortress. Except for the times when mom came and made me clean my room. I hated it. I used to fight and argue and I was spoiled. I was a spoiled, spoiled brat back then. Were all kids so much trouble when they were growing up? Or was it just me? My old desk was over in the corner. It was just as I'd left it, without a master to call its own. So I pulled out the chair, sat down. There, desk. Your master is back. The wood creaked. Too late. I just remembered this chair was uncomfortable. <laughs> and some things like this never change. Some time passed. I started wondering what was for dinner. The sound of approaching footsteps grew louder and louder. My door slid open. I looked to see who it was. My mom called. Uh, looked back at me with a smile. She had the western sky at her back. The setting sun poured vague shadows all over her. Thin as a knife, quiet as a dagger, but always so soft. That was mom for you. So, I'm going off to visit your father's grave. Would you like to come? Oh god, we get choices. Uh, we don't like her dad, but, you know, we went to, 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 to his altar, so... Sure, I'll go. Maybe I'll do another one after this, uh, where I choose no, I'll stay at home. I see, that's wonderful, she replied gently.
The sun was low, our shadows were long. White curtains spilled like a woman's hair over the lay of the land. Falling, always falling, it would be dark soon. Mom walked with small steps as she always had. Always? Really? When I was younger, one of her steps was two or three of mine. But now the situation was reversed. She asked me questions, all the same ones. How was Tokyo? How was I doing? Was I okay on money? Was work going okay? How about my studies? Was I feeding myself right? Same old, same old. But it wasn't. You couldn't call it that. How do I put it? Deep down inside it hurt. Because I'd never exchanged this many words in person with mom before. We reached a grave. Mom burned some incense. She set down a new bouquet of flowers. She washed, the do uh, she washed down the gravestone. Her hands glided through the air with practiced grace. While mine just held her bags and supplies without practice and without grace. How often did she come here? Everything she did looked choreographed. Uh, choreographed sorry. Well performed. But this was no performance, I could tell. I saw more truth in the movements of her little fingers than in all the holy books of the world. I didn't quite know how to put it. It ate away at me. Mom is always so gentle. And I was not. How could it be? How could her attitudes toward the men uh, be so different? But then Mom stood bolt right up and did something. Remarkably ungraceful. Her face twisted in pain. As did I. I raced to where she stood and caught her in my arms before she fell. So she'd stubbed her toe or something on the grave <laughs> stone. Come on, Mom, I said. Watch out for those things. Wait, you've tris twisted your ankle. Can you stand? Hmm. Oh, wow, 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 she replied. Obviously she couldn't, so I made her sit. Uh, Mom, I said, shaking my head. You sure you're okay? That was awfully clumsy of you. <laughs> Sorry about that, she answered with an apologetic smile. So I muttered, I guess I have no choice. I turned my back to her, squatted down, and motioned for her to get on. I could hear her say, Oh, I'll be fine. Ow, ow, ow. I snorted. Come on now, don't be stubborn. It'll be easier this way. Hmm, she replied playfully, I guess I'll just rely on your strong arms. She positioned herself on my back. I could feel her clutching my shoulders. She was hurting, obviously. And up we go, I announced. Well, the moment I stood with her on my back, everything became clear. I could feel Mom whisper something to me, an apology, maybe, or an endearment. She sounded so far away. I felt like crying. How did it come to this? A wave of nausea almost overtook me. I choked it back down. This just wasn't right, man. What had I been doing all this time? What had made me so blind and deaf that I never stopped to notice this? Mom, tell me, all your life, and mine. Oh God, were you always this light and fragile? I tried to say something, I failed. Mom asked me if, I, if something was the matter. There was such a warm concern in her voice. All I could manage was, oh, sorry. You okay with holding the bags? Mom laughed at that, told me that she could handle that much and that she felt nice and safe. I could feel her smile against my back. So apparently I was the only one who was embarrassed about this situation. The sun was low, our shadows were long. But where there had once been two, now there were one. Our pace was slow, I didn't mind that. I wanted to do something, say something, apologize to the woman I was carrying on my back. Who had carried me in her belly. Who had grown me into adulthood. Who had grown so light, so frail, so mortal. Now that it was too late. So I stammered, sorry I, I never did more for you. I haven't been a very good son. Huh? What in the world are you talking about, Takahiro? I kept my mouth shut. I felt, rather than heard, Mom sigh. We were silent for a long time. Then she sighed again and said, For someone so smart, you're awfully dense. I could only manage to surprise, huh, to that. I mean, what else could I have said? You must be blind, can't you see? You've done so much, the fact that is that you're here. The fact is you've come back to see me. The fact is you're carrying me. The fact is you're a wonderful son. No mom in the world could ask for more. Great. I wouldn't be able to say anything all night. I couldn't see mom, of course. I was carrying her on my back, but I didn't have to because I knew. I could feel her smiling, smiling wide, because she knew that she'd won.
that's where we are going to end the second part. This one was a little bit longer than the first part, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite a good story. Now, um, if you enjoyed Anywhere Throughout, make sure to leave a like and comment down below if you want to see me do more of these things. Very confronting. <laughs> Very confronting, this story. Anyways, basically what happened is uh, we visited our father's grave, and I don't... I guess we don't really like her dad. But you know, we don't mind if he was her dad, I guess. And uh, mom's awesome. Yay for moms. <laughs> Hashtag yay moms. Everyone go on Twitter and tweet that. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Anywhere Throughout. And uh, this was Tegami, or otherwise known as The Ladder, Part 2. And I hope to see you guys in the next video I'm going to make. I'm Seeker and I'm signing off. I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>